What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Nurse Bass back with another video and guys I'm super excited to be bringing you another educational video. Um, what we're going to be talking about in this one by high demand from you guys out there, I've had several of you request it, is the anatomy and the physiology behind oxygenation. Let's get into it. Are you listening? Nurse Bass. Beast mode. So guys, of course, whenever we're talking about oxygenation, what we're going to be talking about are the lungs. The lungs are the primary organ that our body possesses that brings in oxygen into our body that can then be distributed to the rest of the cells of our body and is also able at the same time to expel carbon dioxide as a waste product. So whenever we're taking a look at the lungs here, of course, on, now this is an anterior view of the lungs that we're looking at right now. On the left hand side you can see we have two lobes to our lungs, on the right side we have three lobes kind of demonstrated by these lines, these divisions. Ignore on this left side of this diagram, ignore the, uh, <laughs> the butchered color job. <laughs> Coming down into the lungs we can see our main, our um, <clears throat> trachea coming down into our two main stem bronchi, our left and right side, which then branch off into smaller bronchioles. So this is something important to take note of and what we're going to do is we're going to take a little cross section right here out of the lungs and we're going to take a closer more microscopic look at the anatomy of the lungs. Now what we're going to show here, what we're beginning to draw are these little grape like dots, these little grape like clusters almost is how they're often described and these are actually little small alveoli that comprise one total globular alveolar sac and it's within these individual alveoli where gas exchange occurs well we'll get back to that now what's coming off what's stemming off of these alveolar sacs are actually those bronchioles those bronchioles that we looked at in the previous uh, diagram these bronchioles where oxygen's coming in coming down through our trachea to our two main stem bronchi down to our little bronchioles and feeding into these alveolar sacs where gas exchange occurs. Again, we'll come back to that. Now it's important to note as we start to see these arteries and these veins get drawn here, let's remember from our previous discussion on the anatomy of the heart, we'll remember that there's one unique thing about the pulmonary vasculature. Whenever our heart ejects deoxygenated blood up into our pulmonary vasculature. Arteries pump blood away from the heart, right? But it's interesting because these pulmonary arteries carry deoxygenated blood. It's one of the unique things about the pulmonary vasculature system. Normally throughout the body, arteries typically carry oxygenated blood. It's the one place where deoxygenated blood is carried by pulmonary arteries. And then on the adversely, our pulmonary veins are what return freshly oxygenated blood back to our heart. So you'll notice whenever we put off the diagrams here, I don't want you to be confused by seeing these pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. And what's also interesting to note is branching off of these pulmonary arteries and veins that are resting on the superficial side of the bronchioles coming, branching and wrapping around these alveolar sacs are tiny capillaries and it's an actual physical contact of these capillaries on these alveolar sacs that form the alveolar capillary membrane and this is the primary site of gas exchange and so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little cross section out of this alveolar sac and we're going to take a closer look at the alveolar capillary membrane and we're going to discuss the physiology behind oxygenation. Now, quick side note, it's important to know whenever we have this gas exchange, whenever we have oxygen uh, diffusing across this alveolar capillary membrane into our red blood cells and consequently carbon dioxide diffusing from our red blood cells across this alveolar capillary membrane back into our alveoli, we are doing so via diffusion. And this concept of diffusion, let's not forget, is simply solutes, particles, what have you, moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. As we can see, this could be sodium, 
This could be molecules or electrolytes like potassium. This could also be gases. Same concept of diffusion applies, whether it's oxygen, carbon dioxide, etc. And so what we actually can see, what we have happening here now, during inhalation, oxygen is going to enter into our respiratory tract and be deposited into our alveoli. Now, I want you to remember this principle of diffusion. There are actual numerical values associated with this. You guys can go research that further if you're so inclined. What I want to teach you are the principles and the concepts behind oxygenation, the physiology of things that are going to stick and that are going to matter in the long run, and the longevity of whatever career you're pursuing. Whenever we inhale, oxygen comes down into the respiratory tract, deposited into the alveoli. Now, over here on the left side of this alveoli, where we have our pulmonary artery deoxygenated blood. There is a higher concentration, a higher concentration of oxygen than there is in this deoxygenated, poorly oxygenated pulmonary artery. So what's going to happen? This high concentration of oxygen is actually going to diffuse across the semi-permeable capillary membrane into this pulmonary artery or into this capillary and into this red blood cell and all of these little oxygen molecules are going to diffuse because there's a higher concentration of O2 and they're going to diffuse into these red blood cells leaving you with these nice oxygenated red blood cells that are going to return back to the left side of our heart via our pulmonary veins. Now, consequently, or adversely, or whatever transition word I'm thinking of, on the other hand, CO2, this is the same thing now, same kind of concept we have to think about. CO2 is in a much higher concentration over here in this deoxygenated blood you have to remember CO2 being carried in these red blood cells I know I've kind of got my dots bleeding outside of the lines here um, higher concentration of CO2 in this pulmonary artery as well than there is inside of our alveoli so the same concept of diffusion is going to be applicable here as well. Now what is actually going to occur is we are going to have CO2 diffusing across the single cell semi-permeable alveolar capillary membrane. That's a mouthful, but that is exactly what is occurring. Exactly what's occurring. And so what ends up happening after these gases have exchanged for this one cycle of ventilation, now with exhalation, CO2 is going to exit our respiratory system. And this is one individual alveoli that we're looking at here, right? Remember, this is occurring with every single alveoli, all these alveolar sacs. This is how oxygenation is occurring. This, ladies and gentlemen, is indeed the physiology of oxygenation. Like I said, there are actual numerical values associated with the pressure gradients within the capillaries versus the alveoli associated with O2 and CO2 and that will give you an even better idea of um, how there's a greater concentration of oxygen in the alveoli versus this pulmonary artery and how there's a greater concentration of CO2 within this de these deoxygenated red blood cells than there is within this alveoli and how these gases exchange. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can keep up with all of that, I hope that made sense. Share this with a friend if you found it helpful. Go back, pause, rewind it, whatever you got to do to make this material stick. This is the physiology of oxygenation, man. And this is the foundation for all of you out there who are pursuing any kind of career in healthcare. This is the foundation of everything respiratory, every disease process, every pathophysiological process that you're going to learn about. This is it. This is where it begins. So learn it.
learn about the alveolar capillary membrane. There's a lot more to learn. I didn't even, I barely scratched the surface here. We're just getting started with the basics. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. We're putting out content every week to motivate, uplift, and inspire you to be the best damn nurse you can be. It's your boy Nurse Bass, and I'll see you in the next video. Right on. Pushing off my sneakers to the ground, I do not jump, I move the earth down. Bear witness to the genius of my sound. Born at the bottom, but now I'm top down. Look, I'm a college swagger.